Let's begin with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, we bless you. We praise you and we worship you. We magnify your name, Lord God. For you said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Spirit of the living God, as we are about to break the bread of life, we pray, oh God, that you will give us understanding, not only understanding, but when we hear your words, oh God, give us the grace to accept them, to believe them and to act upon them. So our very lives and existence can be blessed. In Jesus' name I have prayed. Amen. I just want to say good evening to each and every person, everyone on Zoom, everyone on the prayer line. Good evening, good evening, good evening. Today, the topic is um, learn who your greatest enemy is and how to defeat it. Learn who your greatest enemy is and how to defeat it. Now, if I were for you to know of an enemy, you must know what the definition of an enemy is. An enemy, as per the dictionary says, it is one that is antagonistic to another, especially one seeking to injury, overthrow, or confound an opponent to do something harmful or deadly. So if someone is your enemy, that's what they seek to do. An enemy is a person who actively, listen to the words, an enemy actively opposes someone or something. Now the Latin word inimicus means hostile, unfriendly, and it is the root of enemy. And it comes from the prefix in or not. And Amicus, amicus, as when you hear somebody say you are amicable. So amicus means friendly. So it means that an enemy is not a friend. You've got to know that your enemy is not your friend. Now, there are three enemies of the believer. The believer only has three enemies and three enemies only. It is the three S. If you make it, if you put it in a way that you remember it, it will always come back like that. So the believer only has three enemies, three S, Satan, the system of the world, and self. So who is your greatest enemy? If I were to ask you, who is the greatest of the three? Is it the system of the world, the world system? Is it Satan or is it self? I am convinced that most people will say it is Satan. Some will say it is the system of the world, but few would say that it is self. Now, if you have a chosen either Satan or the world system and is mixed, you are absolutely incorrect. Your greatest enemy is yourself. Now, let me prove in scriptures that your greatest enemy is you. Let's look at the word. John 16 verses 33 says, these things I have spoken unto you that in me ye might have peace. In the word you shall have tribulation. This is Jesus speaking. In the word you shall have tribulation. So the word is an enemy, but it is not your greatest enemy. In the word you shall have tribulation. But I love our God. He never leaves us there. He says, but be of good cheer. Cheer. I have overcome the world. I have overcome the world. He said, be of good cheer, Sharon. Be of good cheer, Lillian. Be of good, be of good cheer, Caroline. God has overcome the world, Zeb. God has overcome the world, Martin. So be of good cheer. 1 John 2, 16, for all that is in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. It is not of the Father, but it is of the world. I want you to hold your thought on that because it is going to corroborate and it is going to support that it is your flesh. It is self that is the greatest enemy. Did you hear what he says that is in the world? He says, all that is in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. That is all self. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Now let's look at the devil. 
Satan. Revelation 12 verses 10 says, for the accuser of the brethren, indeed he is an accuser. So he is an enemy of yours, but he's not your greatest enemy. And I'm going to break it down and show it to you. The devil Revelation 12, 10, for the accuser of the brethren, he has been thrown down from this place where he stood before our God, accusing them day and night. Now they have conquered him. He's the accuser of the brethren. He accused Job. He goes before God and he accuses us. Colossians 2.15, and having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Having spoiled principalities and powers. Who spoiled principalities and powers? And what did he triumph over them in it, he spoiled principalities and powers on the cross uh, at Calvary. Christ, uh, he spoiled principalities. He triumphed over Satan uh, because of the cross. Uh, jo 1 John 3 verses 8, uh, for this purpose was the Son of God manifested uh, that he may destroy the works of the devil. Did you hear that G God uh, defeated Satan? He defeat Jesus defeated Satan. He defeated him on the cross. He made an open show of him. He triumphed over him. Satan is not your greatest enemy. Jesus said, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. He has defeated Satan. He has defeated and robbed hell, death, and the grave. Now let's look at self. Self. James 1, 13 through 15. Let no man say when he's tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man, but every man is tempted, every man is tempted, every man is tempted when he's drawn by his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Romans 6, 19, I am speaking in human terms because of the weakness of your nature. For just as you presented the parts of your bodies as slaves to impurities and to lawlessness for lawlessness, so now present them as slaves to righteousness for sanctification. Galatians 5, 17, for the desire of the flesh is against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. For these are in opposition one to another in order to keep you from doing whatever you want. There is a war in your member, Sharon. There is a war in your member, Joy. There is a war in your member, Jenna. The spirit and the flesh is fighting, is fighting. Guess who has to, 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 to do the tiebreaker? Your will, the spirit and the flesh, the spirit and the flesh, and you are going to decide who shall win. Ephesians 4, verses 22 through 24. You were told that your flesh desires will destroy you. You were told that your foolish, rather, your foolish desires will destroy you and that you must give up your old way. You were told that your foolish desires will destroy you and that you must give up your old way of life with all its bad habits. Let the spirit change your way of thinking and make you into a new person. You were created to be like God. And so you must please him with true holiness. 
Romans 12, verses 2. And be not conformed to this word, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The last one, and I'm going to show you something that the Holy Spirit showed me. 2 Corinthians 6, verses 17 through 18. Wherefore, come out from among them. Are you saved but still among them? The Bible commands you to come out from among them and be separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I shall receive you, and will be your and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord. Now, why is my flesh such a great enemy of mine? Listen. Jesus said, I have overcome the world. The Bible says that Jesus defeated Satan on Calvary's cross. He made an open shame of him. So the first two Jesus did all by himself. The reason why you and I are still struggling is because we must, one, pull off the old man. We must study to show ourselves approved of God. We must pray. We must partner. We we must, so do you see why our flesh? Because there's work to be done. The first two, Jesus did it all by himself. He defeated the world, he overcame the world, and he defeated Satan. But humankind, the mind, must be renewed. And Jesus is not going to renew your mind for you. The Holy Spirit is not going to renew your mind for you. The Holy Spirit is not going to, the Bible says, put off the old man. The Holy Spirit is not going to put off the old man for you. The Bible says, study to show thyself approved unto God. Jesus is not going to study for you. The Holy Spirit is not going to study for you. The Bible says to renew your mind. Jesus Jesus is not going to renew your mind for you. The Holy Spirit is not going to renew your mind for you. This is why self is the greatest enemy because there's work to be done and we don't want to do the work. One was done all by Jesus. He did Satan. We didn't have any input in it. He overcame the world. We didn't have any input in it. But when it comes to sanctification, we have got to work with the Holy Spirit. It takes a partnership. This is why we are our greatest enemy. Because if you don't have a desire for holiness, if you are not willing to do the work, if you do not study to show thyself approved unto God, if you do not partner with the the Holy Spirit, your mind, the Bible says that the mind is the battleground. Any time you've seen a man that is defeated in the natural, he was first defeated in the spirit realm. We have got to renew your mind. This is what the Bible calls the flesh. It is a mindset that is antagonistic to God. It is a mindset that doesn't want anything that is holy and that is righteous. It is our Adamic nature at its very core. This is why your greatest enemy did Satan defeat Jesus? No, he didn't defeat him, but he was very God of very God and very man of very man. He was deity, but he walk this earth for three years as a man. He did it and he showed us how we can do it. He did not, he had natural, supernatural powers, but he never used it. He depended on the spirit of the living God. My Bible pens, I don't know about yours. Who is it who will harm you if you be a follower of that which is good? Oh, oh, oh. Let me tell you something and break it down. That most of you will not like to hear. We love to talk about the enemy. Oh, the enemies hit my health. Oh, the enemies hit my finance. Oh, the enemies do that. When you were doing drugs and you were doing alcohol and you were partying and not getting enough rest and you were doing this and you were doing that and you planted those seeds in the ground and 15 years later, you're reaping your harvest. Who harmed you? Wasn't it you? Wasn't it you who harmed yourself? 
when God gave you a great job and tell you to fix your attitude, you cuss out everybody, you swear, you get to jo the job late, you have no respect, you don't know how to submit, and you were fired. Who harmed you? Wasn't it you? God gave you a great home. You didn't pay your bills. You left your mortgage. You left your rent. You went here, there, and everywhere. You lost your house, and now you're back living in somebody's basement, and you're talking about the devil. Who did that? Wasn't it you? When God told you, can two walk if they be not agreed? But the man was fine looking, but you forgot that he wasn't saved. And you went out and you laid with him and you marry him. And then he started beating you like a bat with a ball. Who did that to you? Wasn't it you? You got a car, you left it everywhere. You got a ticket today, a ticket tomorrow, you didn't address them. One day you went and there was no car. Who did that to you? Wasn't it you? Our greatest enemy is not Satan. Our greatest enemy is a faulty mindset. It is a wrong way of thinking. All the enemy has to do is to get you not to read the word. All the enemy has to do is to get you not to pray. All the enemy has to do is to get you to react rather than respond outside of the word of God. And he knows that the great universal principle of seed, time, and harvest will catch you, will come up and catch you. I was a babe in Christ, and in many instances, I still am. And the Holy Spirit spoke to my heart, Sharon. He said, whenever you see things are not going well in your life, don't start with the enemy. Start with yourself. Start looking at your own life. Ask yourself, what is it I have done, or was it what is it I failed to do that has brought this upon me. He says, start there. After you have done that and you see that it, it is not something that you've done or nothing that you fail to have done, then you start going after the enemy. But we like to start with the enemy first because there's a way that seemeth right unto a man. We think more highly of ourselves than we are. Your greatest enemy is your faulty mindset. If we would put off the old man, if we would have our minds renewed. How do I do that, Jenna? You need the word and you need to work and you need prayers. And all three must be done through partnership with the spirit of the living God because you can never live a life pleasing unto God without the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. Satan will come in upon you, but the Bible says that when the enemy comes in upon you like a flood, that the spirit of the living God will raise a standard and set him to flight. You don't think you can live in a contaminated world and still be sold out to God? Why don't you have a conversation with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Why don't you have a conversation with Daniel? These were lads, young people who said, we will not bow down. We will not bow down. You and I, we have been outfitted with the greatest power, the power of the Holy Spirit. We have been given God's holy pericope. We have been given the Holy Writ. We have been given the B-I-B-L-E, B's book, I instructions, B before, L leaving, and E earth. We have been given our life manual. The enemy will come in at you at a flood. He will set obstacles in front of you. He will hit you there. Yes, he will. And he will hit you there. Yes, he will. But he shall not defeat you. If, the, if you are living right and you're in right standing with God, the enemy can never defeat you. If he defeats you, the Bible is a lie. Oh yes, he's going to come at you. 
Oh, yes, he's going to get a few blows in. Oh, yes, he's going to put obstacles in your ways. Oh, yes, you're going to be distracted. Oh, yes, you'll be disturbed. Oh, there are times you will cry and you will be dismayed, but you shall not be struck down. We have got to renew our minds. We must come out of the world. I find out that the church has become a mixed multitude. We want everything except holiness and righteousness. We just want to be saved and then we want to live like a devil and then we want to get to heaven sanctification we don't want i am come charging you and i'm challenging you i'm telling you take up your cross daily and follow jesus christ stay in the word get out of the world turn off your television we are being programmed every single day and we don't even realize it walk down the street and see a Caucasian gentleman in a suit and you will walk you will walk past him with confidence walk down the street and see a black youth with his pants a little bit down and his hair braided and you will grab your pocketbook who told you to do that programmed unconsciously programmed unconsciously programmed unconsciously. Do you know why Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and Daniel and the saints of old, the first century church, why they were so strong in the Lord? Because they made a decision. The first thing that you and I have to do, we have got to make a decision. We have got to make a God first and a God foremost mindset. Oh yeah, you know all the songs on the radio. You know the lyrics of 50 cents. You know all about the Kardashians. You know about sex in the city, but let me ask you three Bible verses and you don't know it. And you've been saved for 15 years. Let me ask you this and ask you that about the world. And before I am finished with my question, you will be able to answer me. But let me ask you about the things of God. Let me ask you, when was the last time you witnessed? Let me ask you, when was the last time you told somebody about Jesus Christ? Let me ask you, when was the last time you prayed for the leadership in this country? When was the last time you prayed for America? When was the last time you asked God, kill my flesh? Oh, Father, help me to put my flesh under. When was the last time you said, God, I'm wrestling with you. I'm locking this door today. I am going to zip my lip. I'm turning off the cell phone and the TV and I'm tarrying before you for the spirit of the living God because I want you to fill me. When was the last time you said, Father, Lord God, I need to be like Jesus. When was the last time you said, Lord God, take this wicked heart out of me. When was the last time you said, I pressing my way forward. When was the last time you laid? You challenged, you challenged, you challenged heaven. and said, Father God, if you don't change me, if you don't change me, if you don't wash me, oh no, oh no, listen to our prayers. Lord God, I need a house. I need a husband and I need him yesterday. I need this and I need that. Where is the need for holiness? Where is the need for righteousness? Where is the need for you to say, Lord God, oh Holy Spirit, consume me. Holy Spirit, take me over. Holy Spirit, I give you my will. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, move through me. Holy Spirit, bite. Oh, no, no, no. That's not the present day believer. I heard someone sent me a little clip with Donnie McClurkin. And he said, he's so saddened. Listen, Sharon. He said, when you go to the gospel awards, oh, they sing songs. They sing gospel songs. They're lifting up the name of Jesus. He says, but when the gospel awards are finished and you go backstage, they're smoking and they're drinking alcohol. Oh, we have a form of godliness, but we deny the power thereof. This is why, don't you know that the Bible says in the book of Proverbs, if an edge is broken, a serpent will bite you. All Satan has to do is to get us to break the edge. So he can come in. 
Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you walk around and tell everybody you're richly blessed and highly favored. But I can't see it in your life. They can't see it in mine. Satan is not afraid of you throwing God's name around and Jesus' name around and reading John 3, 16 and reading this verse and reading that. He's going to correct you. He'll even put in the punctuations for you. Satan only fears a Christian who is knowledgeable, who is unafraid, who is walking upright with God and who knows how to wield the sword of the spirit if you do not fit. All of the above categories that I have mentioned, Satan is unafraid of you. He's not. Your greatest enemy is your mind, your unrenewed mind. It is where war is waged because the mind tells you what to say, what to do, what not to do, and all of those will determine your outcome and the quality of your Christian life. Satan is not your greatest enemy. It is our unregenerated mindset. Remember when you were saved, the only thing that was immediately generated was your spirit man. The rest we had to do the work. And Christians are lazy people. It doesn't sound good, but Christians are lazy. We are very lazy. Listen to our prayers. Lord, do this. Lord, do that. Lord, do that. Lord, do that. Where's the prayer? Lord God, use me. Oh God, that you will use me. Oh God, I'm not my own. Lord, will you not send me on an errand today? Lord, will you not? It's always what you can get from God. And we're not striving for holiness and righteousness. And that's why we live defeated lives. We have got to get to the place where we have made up our minds. For God, I live and for God, I die. We have got to get to the place where we seek first the kingdom of God and its righteousness. We must love the word of God. We must know the word of God. We must hide it in our hearts that we might not sin against God. Do you hear what the scriptures, the scriptures are calling us to work? The scriptures are calling us to action. All we want to do is to pray. That's all we want to do. And most of us don't even pray. You ask most Christians if you can stand and pray 10 minutes for one subject, one matter. Not my father, my brother, my sister, food, because almost anybody can do that. But let me pray just 10 minutes for the sick. And they will not be able to finish 10 minutes of prayer. Concentrated prayer, pointed prayer on one. They will not be able to do it. Yet look how fit the Bible is. They will not be able to do it. Tell them to pray 10 minutes for holiness and righteousness. Don't talk about food. Don't talk about money. Just 10 minutes of holiness and righteousness. They will not be able to do it. Just 10 minutes. Just 10 minutes. Ask them, Lord, give me the, the, the wisdom how to go out and minister to somebody and ask them when they go out there that a Jehovah's Witness catch them, a, a, a Muslim catch them to defend their faith. They will not be able to defend their faith. We've been saved five years. We've been saved 10 years. We've been saved 15 years. We've been saved 20 years. Where is the fruit of our salvation? Where? My friends, this was a hard lesson today. The world system is not your greatest enemy. Look at Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Look at Daniel. Look at all the other saints in old, how they lived in a filthy, corrupt world, but their lives glorified God. How Satan withstood them, but not defeat them. There's a difference. Our greatest enemy is a faulty mindset. Our greatest enemy is that we're caught between two opinions. Our greatest enemy is because we don't, we're not sold out to the things of God. Our greatest enemy is because we don't see ourselves the way God sees us. And all of what I'm saying here, mindset.
Would you not renew your mind today? Would you not get into the word of God and get the word of God into you? If someone under the sound of my voice would just say, Lord, I'm going to finish out this month, but for the new year, I'm going to turn off my television. For the new year, I'm going to give up cable. For the new year, I'm going to give this up. For the new year, I have a friend and she told me, and she was very indignant. And she says, well, God answers your prayers. He blesses you. And she was very indignant. And I asked her, have you paid the price I have? I said, I don't own a television. I said, I haven't owned one for more than a decade, more than, a, more than 15 years. I haven't owned a television. More than 15 years, I haven't paid a cable bill. More than 15 years, the last time I watched a secular movie, it was precious. I said, have you paid the price I have paid? Have you stayed before God like me? Have you gotten out of the world like I have? Have you turned your back on the world? Have you fostered a God first and a God foremost mindset and you ask the Holy Spirit to take absolute control, then how should you be angry that God has blessed me and is blessing me? There's a price to be paid. There's a P-R-I-C to be paid so you can read the P-R-I-Z-E. Are we willing to do that? I lay before God, Sharon, as God is my witness. I refuse to die until I complete my assignment in excellence. I refuse to go back to God empty-handed. I refuse to not bring souls with me. I refuse for the death of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to go in vain on my behalf. I refuse. I utterly refuse. And Jesus died a brutal death. He paid an awful price. And I refuse. I refuse to make it into heaven by the skin of my teeth. I refuse. And that's what God wants us to get to that place where we make up our minds. For God, I live and for God, I die. This morning, while I was in church praying, I put a stay on death. I refuse to die until I complete my assignment. I put a stay on death. I shall not die. I shall not die. I shall not die until I complete my assignment. In the time that God has allotted me, and not only will I complete it, but I will complete it in excellence. I shall not die. I will not die. I will not die. I have gotten to the place and thanks be to the help of the Holy Spirit, where I desire nothing in this world more than I desire my God. Oh, God is amazing. God's amazing. God's amazing. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and we bless you and we praise you and we worship you. We thank you, Lord, for you said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Spirit of the living God, you have spoken to your people, Lord God, and through me, your handmaiden. I pray that the words we have heard today will not fall on deaf ears. I pray, oh, Father God, you will give us the grace by the power of your spirit, Lord God, to take off the old man. Paul says, I'll put my flesh under. Give us the grace to put our flesh under in the name of Jesus. Give us the grace to study, to show ourselves approved unto God. Give us the grace to call upon the Holy Spirit to empower us, knowing that we cannot please you without the presence and the power of the spirit of the living God working 
in our lives. Give us the grace to hunger and thirst after righteousness. Give us the grace, oh Father God, to love you with our whole heart. Give us the grace, Lord. We need grace to live this Christian life, Lord. Give us the grace to come out from among them and be separated. Give us the grace to believe the word of God, for your words are yea and amen. Give us the grace, Lord God, just as the deer panteth by the water brooks. Cause our souls to pant after thee, Lord God. Oh, Father, Lord God, give us the grace that your words will be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Give us the grace, oh God, to hunger and thirst after holiness and righteousness. Give us the grace to say, not my will, but thy will be done. Give us the grace, Lord God, to love you, to understand the price that was paid on Calvary's cross. Oh, Lord, that our feet will be planted on you. Oh, Lord, that we will just hunger and thirst after righteousness. Oh, Lord, we do not fill our hearts by the power of your spirit. We do not circumcise our hearts today, Lord God. We do not turn away everything that is wicked and everything that is vile and everything that is an abomination unto you. Will you not give us hearts like Jesus, Lord? Will you not fill us with your spirit afresh, Lord God? Holy Spirit, will you not revive us and awaken us from our great sleep and our great sleep? Oh, God, touch us today, Lord God. Touch us individually, Lord God. Meet us at the very point of our need, Lord God. Pour your spirit out upon us in the name of Jesus. Revive us again, Lord God. Revive us, revive us, revive us. Oh, revive the church, Lord. The church is in trouble and the church is weak. The church has gone a whoring after other gods. <laughs> the church has left this first love we have left to our post. We're no longer watchmen. <laughs> we are like mixed multitudes, oh Father, Lord God, but I pray for a great awakening. I pray for revival and I pray for a Pentecostal experience. Oh, Father, that we will renew our minds. Oh, that we will get out of the world, oh God. Oh, that we will sit at the feet of Jesus, the word, and learn of him. Oh, Father, I thank you for each and every person under the sound of my voice. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, oh, Father, God, that you will touch them. Touch them from the very crown of their heads to the soul of their feet. Will you not revive my brothers and sisters, Lord God? Will you not strengthen them on the inward part in the name of Jesus? Will you not speak to them in a still small voice? Will you not encourage them by the power of your spirit, Lord God? Will you not show them what needs to be done and how to do it? Will you not send help to my brothers and sisters, send help to them, Lord, send help, Jesus, send help to my brothers Brothers and sisters, Lord, send help to them, Lord, send help, they need help, we need to be strengthened, Lord, send help today, Lord, and send it quickly, Lord, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, send help. Send help, Lord. Send help to my brothers and sisters, Lord. And when you send them help, don't forget me. Don't forget me, Lord. Don't forget me. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you. And I bless you and I praise you. And I worship you and I magnify your name, Lord. Oh, Father, help us. Help us, Lord. We need your help, Lord. We're standing in the need of prayer. Satan desire to sift us like wheat. But Jesus, pray for us. Jesus, pray, Jesus. Oh, God, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Strengthen us. Strengthen our inner man. In Jesus' name, I have prayed. Amen. Just remember all night prayers on January 6th, Friday, January 6th, from 10.30 p.m. until 6 a.m. It's going to be an amazing time. I've been tarrying before the Lord. We need breakthrough in the body of Christ. We need breakthrough. 
heart is broken for the church. God is going to help us. Just remember, mark your calendars. January 6th, Friday, from 10.30 p.m. until 6 a.m. all night. Prayers, prayer, and prophetic explosion. You can't afford to miss it. You cannot. To have something you've never had, you must do something you've never done. Please keep me in your prayers. I have but a little children. Please pray for me. This is Jen Harvey of the Huddle, and the Bible says international ministries. Until we meet again. May the peace, presence, power, purpose, provision, protection, promises, and providence of God rest and abide permanently with you is my prayer. Friends, I love you. Go forth and thrive.